Today's video is sponsored by Yen, and completely unrelated to that, this is a $100 bottle of beer. Welcome back to Craft Computing, everyone. As always, I'm Jeff. Now, those who watch the channel know I don't do a lot of sponsored videos, and I am very choosy about the partners that I work with. Oftentimes, when someone reaches out and proposes a sponsored video, I want to see the product first, and that's pretty much exactly what happened with Yian. They sent over the system, I'm a fan of the value that they offer, so I figured we'd might as well take a look at it. I think a lot of my audience knows by now that I like to offer as many different perspectives as I can, both from a consumer and a professional standpoint. And as much as I like DIY, I also enjoy spending time away from my workbench. Building and troubleshooting PCs is not for everyone, and that is totally okay. And that's where buying a pre-built system may be the right option for a lot of people. If you want modern performance with a single source for tech support, then a pre-built PC might just be the answer you're looking for. Today, we'll be taking a look at the Yian Yari 2 X13 and going over some of the features and performance of it. Full transparency, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, Yian did sponsor this video as a way to showcase some of their newest products. Everything you see here was provided for this overview, but I will be sending it all back once the video is completed, so in around 12 minutes. Now, I mentioned troubleshooting just a couple of seconds ago, and not everyone wants to troubleshoot their PC or even knows where to start if they have a problem. If you buy a pre-built system, though, you have a single point of contact for anything that could ever go wrong. In the case of Yian, every single PC they sell comes with Yian Silver Shield and lifetime tech support, which means if something fails in your PC, you don't have to look up receipts from Micro Center or Newegg or Amazon just to replace a single part. If you contact Yian, they'll walk you through anything that you need to take care of. So now that my shill requirements are out of the way, what are we looking at here? This particular system is the Yian Yari 2 X1302. It comes rocking an Intel Core i7-13700KF paired with an ASUS Prime Z790P motherboard. It's got an MSI RTX 3070 Ti, 32GB of XPG DDR5 5200, a 1TB Gen 4 NVMe drive, and a 2TB 3.5-inch hard drive for all of your game storage. The PC came nicely packed in a double cardboard box with AB foam inside, which is pretty much standard for shipping PCs nowadays, and for good reason, as everything arrived in perfect condition. When I pulled the PC out of the box, I was happy to see right on top was a certificate of inspection, noting that it wasn't just assembled and thrown into a box. It was actually tested with 3 d Mark and Prime95 to ensure stability before shipping. The case itself is made by Yian and features tinted tempered glass panels on both the front and the side of the PC. It's a very clean look and the case itself has a matte black finish. Adding to the premium feel are the four included 140mm addressable RGB fans which provide plenty of airflow and near silent operation. Looking inside the system, the main compartment is very clean and well organized. CPU cooling is handled by a Yian 240mm AIO liquid cooler, which has its own addressable RGB on board, adding to your customization options. When I popped the back off the PC, again, cable management is on point, with cables neatly held in place with a couple zip ties. It's no show PC, but I've also built far worse in my lifetime. And on this channel. Of course, I didn't take it out of the box just to look at the thing, and a gaming PC is only good as its performance, right? So let's fire up some games and see how it does. Focusing on the Yian Yuri 2 as a streaming PC, let's benchmark some of my favorite competitive games, starting with CSGO. For this title, I ran at 1080p and max settings, as some of the smoke effects can be very taxing on both the CPU and GPU, and I wanted to showcase a worst case scenario. Even with everything turned up to the max, we still managed 407 FPS on average, with a 0.1% low of 85. The 1% low managed to stay well above our refresh rate of our monitor, scoring 148 FPS. That's a pretty impressive result and can only get better by reducing some of the eye candy if you're wanting to play this game competitively. Risk of Rain 2 is one of my favorite co-op games in recent memory. It's a four-player cooperative shooter looter, and just like CSGO, had no problem staying well above 144 FPS, with an average of 265 and a 1% low of 141. Again, I tested at 1080p and max settings, and the 0.1% low of 75 could be improved on if it's something that bothers you. 
For Rocket League, I opted to test with some more competitive settings, running at 1080p, but with the performance rendering options. With these options, the RTX 3070 Ti had no problem spitting out frames with reckless abandon, with an average of 563 FPS, a 1% low of 205, and a 0.1% low of 150. In fact, while benchmarking, there were a grand total of 142,638 frame times captured, and only 38 of them were slower than 144 FPS, with only seven of them being slower than 100. You want consistency? You've got consistency. Finally, let's let the PC stretch its legs a little bit with some more graphically intensive games. Cyberpunk 2077 is one of the few games with nearly every RTX feature implemented in the game, which means it's also one of the more difficult games to render at ultra settings. With everything cranked up as high as it would go, we see an average of 46 FPS and a 0.1% low of 21. It's definitely playable, but we're also starting to stretch that definition. But there's one setting that I left turned off, and that was DLSS, NVIDIA's AI Assisted Accelerator. Turning this on, we see the average jump all the way up to 67 FPS, and the lows improve to nearly 40 FPS as well. That is a dramatic increase, and certainly something that I'd keep enabled if I also wanted to take in all of the eye candy from Night City. Finally, Tiny Tina's Wonderlands has been my single player jam as of late. At 1080p and ultra settings, we manage just shy of 100 FPS on average, but we do see some stuttering with a low of 24. Try as I might, I couldn't find the specific setting that was causing this slowdown, but it is something I only saw in this particular title. I'm guessing there's a specific effect that's causing the issue, or just like Borderlands 3, it has something to do with switching from hip fire to scope, as that's where I was seeing the slowdown occurring. While Wonderlands may not have NVIDIA's DLSS, it does have AMD's FSR implemented, which can be enabled no matter which GPU you have in your system. Yet again, we see a dramatic increase in FPS, with our average climbing all the way up to 155 at a 1% low of just 80. Again, the 0.1% low is sitting right around 30 FPS, but it didn't impact gameplay in the slightest. So no matter what game you want to play, this combo of an Intel Core i7-13700KF and RTX 3070 Ti will definitely have you covered. Now, the enthusiasts among you are probably asking why I only benchmarked games at 1080p when we've got a Raptor Lake i7 CPU and an RTX 3070 Ti. While the PC is certainly capable of 1440p gaming, I feel gaming PCs like the Yari X13 from Yian are going to be popular with newcomers to PC gaming. People who are wanting to get into game streaming but have no desire to learn how to build their own PCs. 1080p will not only maximize performance in games, it's definitely the way to go if you want to get into competitive gaming. Plus, monitor options are far less expensive than higher resolution alternatives. Ian included this 27-inch curved panel for us to take a look at as well, offering 1080p resolution and 144Hz refresh rates available for just $250. Along with the PC, Ian sent over a full host of streaming products for me to take a look at, and I think we'll start with this webcam. For $40, you get a 1080p webcam with a pretty decent image quality. Now, obviously, at $40, the image isn't going to win any awards, but I don't think it has to, as you do get a pretty crisp and clean looking image. Another feature that I like is you do get autofocus with this camera, but unlike a lot of the more inexpensive webcams, this one doesn't seem to be constantly hunting for focus. Once it's locked in on me, it pretty much stays that way, so you're not fighting a constantly hunting and seeking blurry image. Oh. Now, out of all the gear that I've taken a look at today, actually, the one I'm most impressed with is probably this microphone. This is the Agile NL from Yian. It's a USB-C condenser microphone with a number of good features, especially considering the price point. For $90, Yian is delivering what I think is pretty fantastic audio quality for this price range. Now, that doesn't include just the microphone itself. That also includes the pop filter that you see right here, as well as the boom arm that I'm using to hold it. That means I'm able to easily get the microphone into a position that's very comfortable for me, sits right in the right position to capture my voice at the right distance, and doesn't get in the way of me seeing my screen or my controls down in front of me. Now the microphone itself does have some handy on-body controls, one for gain adjustment of the microphone itself, as well as headphone volume. So you can plug your gaming headset directly into the microphone to get not only your game audio, but direct monitoring of the microphone itself. 
All right, I'll take that. I won the goal in overtime. So if you're looking for a nice entry level streaming setup, this is definitely not a bad option, especially considering the $40 price point of the webcam and $90 for the entire audio package. And since we've got an NVIDIA RTX card, that means we can run NVIDIA Broadcast to enhance every aspect of our stream. I can blur or even remove the background, placing myself right on screen in front of my game. RTX Voice can also enhance and protect my audio from unwanted harshness or background noise, like the kids who are currently playing outside in the hallway right now. I hope you can't hear that. Other items available include both linear and clicky mechanical keyboards, gaming mice, and headsets, all with varying amounts of RGB. And in my inexpensive peripheral expert opinion, all come at fairly competitive price points. If you go onto just about any gaming forum online and ask what kind of a gaming PC should you build, you might come up with a spec list that looks exactly like this. An Asus Z790 motherboard with an Intel Core i7-13700KF, as well as an RTX 3070 Ti. That is a fairly fantastic bang for the buck, but again, if you don't know how to build yourself a PC, it's still not exactly like putting together LEGO, as some of those gaming forums might have you believe. If you're wanting to get into PC gaming, there's no shame in not building your own PC. Not everyone wants to learn how to do so, and there are plenty of great pre-built options like this PC that we reviewed today from Yian. The Yian Yuri X13, as configured right here, will run you about $2,399, configured with the Core i7-13700KF and 3070 Ti. And all told, with everything you see on the desk right here, you'll be looking at just over $2,850, including the mechanical keyboard, gaming mouse, webcam, microphone, boom arm, and the gaming headset, as well as your 1080p 144Hz gaming monitor. Not a bad deal, all told. If you're interested in checking out the Yi and Yuri X13, I will have affiliate links down in the video description. Go give those a look. On your way down there, make sure to drop this video a like and subscribe to Craft Computing if you haven't done so already. And again, a huge shout out to Yian for sponsoring today's video. If you want to help sponsor Craft Computing, consider joining my Patreon. Link is also down in the video description. As a bonus, you'll get exclusive access to my Discord server, where you can chat with myself and the other hosts from Talking Heads, our weekly live show that airs every Wednesday night at 6 p.m. Pacific time, right here on YouTube. That's going to do it for me in this one. Thank you all so much for watching, and as always, I will see you in the next video. Cheers, guys. And that beer is all of 17%. Glad I'm not doing anything today. Now, for the intro of this video, you might think that I was being sarcastic, but no, this bottle of Anchorage, A Deal with the Devil, is actually $97.99, or roughly $100. Uh, we're gonna drink it today. Luckily, I have nowhere to be this afternoon. Unfortunately for Rhett, he does, and he's gonna help me. <laughs> I shared an undisclosed amount. Because 12 ounces of this is way too much. So again, this is Anchorage Brewing's A Deal with the Devil. It is a double oaked barley wine. Now, what does that mean? Well, it means they made a barley wine, they then aged it for seven months in Heaven Hill bourbon barrels, then transferred to freshly emptied Woodford Reserve barrels uh, for an additional nine months. And this clocks in at 17%. Is it worth $100? Let's find out together. Cheers, buddy. Cheers. Drinkable. <laughs> <laughs> that was my first thought. I don't like necessarily smooth as a descriptor. Uh, I like I like it for like a mouthfeel, but I don't like it for a you can taste the alcohol or you can't taste the alcohol because I like alcohol. I like the taste of it. That's why I drink beer and spirits. Um, but this is smooth. <laughs> at 17%. Holy crap. Yeah, there's an almost cola and toffee and dark cherry. It's not far off from just like a slightly flat cherry Coke. You could tell me that was non-alcoholic. 
and I might believe you. Are you getting much aroma from it? Like... Not a lot, but for a barley wine, that really doesn't surprise me. Yeah. Yeah, it's very muted. Boy, if you if you really breathe deep, like bury your nose into it, you get a little bit of ethanol. Just the slightest amount. But there's nothing about this that warns you for the evening this might become. I got this different aftertaste. Very sweet. That kind of right at the end. <laughs> like it's this super deep, rich, dark, vanilla, playful, <laughs> like kind of flavor. And uh, that's so weird because a normal drink, that didn't come out at all. But just the slightest amount on your tongue and you wait about five seconds and it goes, it, it's, it's a little bit of root beer float. Kind of like it. <laughs> so the aroma is even more muted than when it was cold which is not unexpected for a barley wine. That's pretty typical of such a heavy beer like this. If it's possible, it's getting even darker. Uh, it, it is so much richer, even than it was at the very beginning when we opened it. Um, if you want to talk like a wino, like holy crap, legs for days. I think this will go through the dishwasher and still be dripping. Uh, <laughs> it's a good line. Shut up. It's a great line. <laughs> You're just spitting it out like nobody's business. Well, after 310 beer reviews, I think I know what I'm doing at this point. <laughs> Look, if you're a fan of barley wine, this is definitely fantastic. It is definitely a beer you're going to want to share with your friends, even though it doesn't necessarily come in a bomber. This is all of two points. 2.7, 12.7 ounce. I think for a shared experience, it would definitely be worth the price. As me buying a single bottle to enjoy myself, it is too much, even in a 12 ounce serving. It is just too much. Um, I'm probably five ounces into this. I'm gonna finish it, because I have a reputation. But uh, yeah, this is one that you're gonna wanna get two or more people together and uh, divvy out between the group. Definitely recommend it though. Okay, we're not doing anything else today, are we? <laughs> Should I be seeing sound? <laughs> time, I'm literally time. I'm actually a little buzzed. 